How's it going everybody? In case you're not aware, my name is Andy. This is That Car Vlog Channel. And today, we're simply going to discuss five things that I have selected that I'm not so crazy about with my 1996 Kia Sportage and talk a little bit about what it's been like in the six months that I've owned this vehicle. Before I start into the things that I'm not entirely crazy about with this car, just take a little walk around. In the six months I've had it, it's been a decent car. Now, of course, it's 22 years old, so it's got some imperfections. I got it with this big dent in the front of the fender, and somewhere along the line got this giant door gap here. The fender got pushed in, and now it does that. Not sure how that happened. When I got it, this window trim was kind of already messed up, so if I do about 60, it usually tends to fly out. A little bit of rust here. I think that's the only rust place too, which is remarkable. And of course the interior is not great. Definitely not the cleanest. I got it taken apart a little bit where I was replacing my heater control. And of course it's not exactly the clean because uh, I'm usually the only one in it. Except for a child every once in a while. But um, over the past six months, this has been a actually a pretty reliable vehicle. To be, once again, 22 years old, rocking roughly 124,000 miles right there on the odometer, which is decent for 22 years. But so far, I mean, it started up every time. It's pretty fuel efficient for its time, right around average of about 20 miles to the gallon. And just an all-around good daily driver. Uh, really, the only time I've been without this thing was just a few days when I was having the time and belt replaced and water pump. And that's because I had it in a mechanic shop. I didn't have the means to do it. Now, jumping in, we'll jump into the interior for the first thing that I don't like so much about this car. And take the keys out because they're annoying me. That would be the placement of these. The release levers for the tire carrier on the back as well as the fuel door my problem with those is because they're there they tend to dig into my leg while i'm driving of course i'm not perfectly on it because i'd actually like you to see the levers but it tend they tend to kind of dig in when i'm on the throttle or on the brake um and that's just that can be an issue i just usually have to move my leg to avoid them but it's not so much something to hate it's not a giant issue more of an annoyance really. Um, if Kia had chosen to locate them where most manufacturers do, down here along next to the seat, or maybe somewhere in the middle console area here, I think it might have been a little bit better. But that's where they chose to mount them. Item number two that I don't like so much about this car is once again more of a slight inconvenience, a small gripe, not a major problem. Uh, but nonetheless it is a tad bit annoying um, is how you get into the back now you come in here and you pull the first lever here this is to release the tire carrier on the back come around back you got a lever down here just pull on that lever and it swings out now if i'm not mistaken in 98 they changed this mine is a 96 so pre-98 you had this pin that you then stuck in these holes so that if you happen to be parked in a orientation, maybe tilted to the right slightly, where this gate was going to come back on you, now it can't. Now eventually Kia did change this when they redesigned this car just ever so slightly. And that redesign was nothing more than a few interior changes, taillights, and they also put a rotating release here instead of having to use this pin. So you'd rotate it to release, it'd lock in place, rotate again, it'd unlock and you swing it back. However, that's not the case on the early models. Then over here, simply push in on this combination button and key lock, which is also not present with that uh, with that change. They moved it over here, so I think you actually have to have the key to get into the door into the hatch. But anyway, push that, pull up, and you're in. And to close it, simply the reverse. Put the pin where it belongs. You have the gate a nice sturdy shove and it should be closed. 
So, like I said, not the biggest issue in the world. I feel it's a little overcomplicated to get into the back of this, this car. But I'm sure it could be much, much worse. Although, it could probably be better. Third, deals with the complexity of working on this car. So, if we go into the hood, I'll show you what I mean. So, although it's not the worst thing in the world to work on, there can be several steps doing a rather simple job. Now, I will say, the timing belt and water pump is not a simple job. You've got to get under this cover, and there's all kinds of stuff to take off. We're talking this intake tube here, this hose, a couple of radiator hoses, a couple of drive belts. Uh, there's a housing back there I don't know if you can see for the thermostat, which runs into the middle of this. And there's just a lot to take off, um, which is why I didn't end up doing the job. I just didn't have all the tools necessary to get the, the job done. So, I mean, that is understandably complex with the dual overhead cam engine. I wish it was simpler, but it wasn't. My biggest gripe is the splitting of systems across the engine base. So what do I mean? Well, down underneath this AC compressor right here, you can't see it very well. You might see it in this gap right here. I'm not really sure. There is the power steering pump. That's where the pump is located. And this is where they put the reservoir. So why it's on, two, the system runs two different sides of the engine bay, I'm not sure, but probably not the biggest thing in the world. The biggest one is with the intake. So here's your intake manifold, your throttle body. And then here's your intake tube, runs all the way to your air box. This is kind of an issue because under this cover here is where you access your spark plugs and your coil on plugs. This has two coils, each that feed to two plugs. And to get just to get to that cover, you're removing everything from here to here. You're removing the throttle cable over. You're putting, taking all, all kinds of hoses. It just seems to me like a little too much to change spark plugs. You know, not to mention once you get in there, you pull the coils off. Then, like most dual overhead cams, the plugs are way down in there. You got to get an extension, yada, yada, yada. Unlike most vehicles where the plugs are over here on the side, like in my 76 Chevy, they're right there. They're easily accessible no matter which one of the eight you're trying to get to. But here it's a, it's a bit of a thing. Not, once again, the biggest problem in the world, but definitely an inconvenience for something as simple as changing spark plugs. Really, that's the worst of the complexity on this car. But that's what I find to be an issue. I, I simply feel maybe there could have been maybe a different way of designing this that could have simplified this. But I'm not an engineer. Maybe this was the best way they could have done it. That's just my opinion. Items number four and five that I'm not crazy about with my 96 Sportage are both sort of related to the gearing of the vehicle. And we're gonna try to get out on the highway here and drive it while I'm talking about this. However, it is rush hour in Knoxville, so that might prove a little more difficult than most other times. So the fourth item that I'm not crazy about with this car, once again relates to the gearing, is the acceleration. Now, no, I didn't go into this expecting a sports car or even any small remote amount of sportiness. It is, you know, a first generation sportage. It wasn't meant for that. However, what it was meant for was decent driving. My problem with the acceleration is how short and I feel the gears are with this thing, and I just cannot talk today. I apologize. What am I talking about? Uh, well, off flat ground, this car accelerates halfway decent. Uh, although first gear does seem really short, you, I mean, you're pretty much ready to shift into second within just a second or two. On flat ground, it's decent. It's not great. You're still probably pushing 
more than 10 seconds to 60 probably even 10, 11 or 12 the big problem is going up a hill when you go up a hill in this car it's not fun it really does not like hills it's I, in my opinion it struggles to go up a hill it's probably the slowest acceleration that I've ever seen in a car honestly when I'm coming up on a hill for example if there's a red light with a hill right afterwards I'm hoping that it will stay green so that I can either go straight on or at least be able to buzz the yellow light and you know not have to deal with that horrible uphill acceleration Number five also relates, I, I'm going to say, to the gearing of the car is, I'm going to call it the problem with the top speed of this car. And that is when you're up on the highway, this thing will do about 60 miles an hour turning about 3,000 RPM. So obviously if you want to climb any higher than that, your RPMs are going to go up. And this is all in fifth gear. You know, you've used all your gears, now you're just gaining RPMs the whole time. If I run 70, I'm pushing pretty close to 3,500 RPM. I'm not a fan of that. I feel the efficiency goes down in this car when you're doing that. Um, not to mention with the Cherry Bomb glass pack, the previous owner put on this thing, it gets very, very loud when your RPMs are at 3,000 or above. So I actually try not to get this thing above 60, mainly to conserve fuel. I'm not, I don't have such a big problem with the sound of it as some other people might. Uh, you know, I'm a, kind of a sound junkie, so I don't mind a little bit of loud noise coming out of the tailpipe. But other people like my wife, you know, sensitive to loud noises, they're not going to like that so much. Uh, I have seen plenty of these, these cars on the interstate, and just like with in, with my case, they're not driving very fast, 60, maybe 65, and safe to say, they're pissing off a lot of people, because, you know, in this day and age, people get on a 55 mile an hour highway, and they're, they want to do 100 anyways, so you are, uh, if you drive this thing on the interstate, you're going to make a lot of people mad best places in the far right lane unless you've got to pass somebody who's just crawling. It's not a high speed runner. Now, it will do a long trip if you're willing to go 60 miles an hour or less. It is very capable of that. And honestly, I wouldn't hesitate if I had to, to take it to Bristol and see my folks. But... I definitely wouldn't be able to drive true interstate speeds in this thing. It's just not happening, not with the gearing. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. The five things that I'm not so in love with about my 96 Kia Sportage. Um, I really can't call these things I hate because I can't hate this vehicle. It has actually been quite good to me. It is a good, cheap, daily driver commuter type vehicle. Just as long as you expect that something that's 22 years old is going to come with some repair and maintenance costs. But this is a vehicle that I feel, if well maintained, taken care of, could probably last well over two to 300,000 miles, in my opinion. Definitely not a car to hate on, just something to kind of be leery of because it is old. Like with every car on the road, it's you know it's going to have imperfections. It's going to have little nuances that someone doesn't like. So with that, uh, once again, I hope you enjoyed the video, found it somewhat informative, and I didn't completely bore you to death. If you did like what you see, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you'll know whenever I post something up because it's not all that often yet. I'm still quite new to this. Uh, make sure to follow me on social media, Facebook and Instagram, at that car vlog channel. And I hope to see you guys, hopefully, pretty soon. Bye. And wouldn't you know, right after shooting this video, my window regulator stops working and is now broken on my driver's side window. Terrific.